The Great Wall of China is the only man-made structure visible from space. Many say it's a myth and many say there are facts. No way. We are not going to discuss about that in our video and this channel is for performance testing. So let us discuss the various myths and the facts about performance testing. So for the next couple of minutes, we are going to see about the various myths and challenges of performance testing. And this video will specifically focus on breaking the various myths and bringing you the facts on performance testing. Myths versus facts. I welcome you all to my channel Little's Law and for those who are visiting my channel for the first time, a little recap, this is your Vasan Shanmugam and I have 12 plus years of experience in performance testing and performance engineering areas. Once again, I welcome you all to my channel. Let's dive in. facts. Myth 1. Performance problems can usually be fixed by simply plugging or adding extra hardware like CPU or memory. Is that true? Well, adding a RAM or a CPU will help us to fix these performance problems. Let us see let us break them one by one. Performance issues are not always hardware related. Performance degradation can happen for a variety of reasons. First, bad code. A poorly written code can degrade the application's performance and that can lead us to face many problems like memory leaks or synchronization issues and this can happen due to inefficient code or inefficient algorithm. Many times the older versions of software or integrated legacy systems can also take a performance issue on the application's performance and this can be tackled by taking the help of the developers and making them to use the optimal coding practice and from the performance testers point or performance testers area we can deal with profilers and code reviews and the second one is product design and architecture and whenever there are unscalable product design and architecture we might face these performance problems say for example when the maximum pool size of the database size database is set to 10, then the maximum number or the simultaneous connections is limited to 10. So no matter any powerful hardware you have or the server you have, you will face any performance problems. Let's now move to the third point, the configuration of servers. So many times the slow response times can be caused due to poor load distribution and any time when any new website or applications are created, the visitors are assigned incorrectly, there are chances where we might face these performance problems and that can even drown out the servers even if the performance or even if the system is under capacity. So these issues can cause a slow response time, especially if the application are receiving too many requests. And we have tools like NeoRoad and Load Runner that helps us to find these infrastructural weaknesses.
let's now move to the second myth. Performance testing can be done by anybody who knows or who has knowledge on load testing tool. Is that true? Only by knowing how to use or how to operate a load testing tool will make a person a performance tester. Let us see the facts. Knowledge on load testing tool is important, but it is not the only component of performance testing life cycle because we have various other critical aspects as well. Let us see them one by one in a detailed manner. The first one, defining clear objectives of the performance testing exercise. We have various types of load testing. We have load test, we have smoke test, we have stress, we have endurance. Each and every type of load testing or a performance testing has its own objective. So an expertise in performance engineering or testing would understand the objective and design the test, design the type of the test based on the objective of the application and the requirement, basically the non-functional requirement. And next, selecting the business or the critical business scenarios. Selecting of business critical scenarios will grow up with the expertise of the performance tester or the performance engineer. But in many cases, if the application is a new one or if the performance tester, tester is a budding performance tester, he might need to discuss with the product owner or the business analyst or with other stakeholders and understand the critical business scenarios to make the performance testing efficient and to understand the various non-functional issues. Thirdly, creating or collecting correct test data. So while we do a load test or a stress test or an endurance test, we might need a huge amount of test data and reusing the test data might create caching issues which should be avoided during any load test because that might bring the response times to a faulty value. So creating and collecting enough number or a correct amount of test data is always a vital part in doing the performance testing and that is a very critical part of a performance testing area. And the fourth one is setting up the right test environment for the production or which has to be equal to the production. So basically most big organizations following follows the rule that the test staging for load testing should be 100% or 100% identical to the production environment. And many of the banking clients are complying to this rule for the mission critical systems, but maintaining such a staging is costly. Therefore, staging often has less resources than production. And when the staging has got not less than 60% resources compared to the production, then the load testing results are valid for the production as well. In most of the cases, if the percentage is smaller, then the test results cannot be applied to the production environment. And it is not possible to perform load testing on one architecture and then apply the results to another architecture. So the right test environment plays a vital role. now move to the myth three performance testing is a subset of functional testing or a part of functional testing is it true is performance testing a functional testing let us see the fact basically 
performance testing is not a functional testing and performance testing is a part of non-functional testing and for any performance tester the objective is to find or to test for response time stability and the scalability of the application and this requires a different mindset since the objective is also different and the different desired skill set or the required skill set of a performance test engineer is also unique and specialized and it is very important to educate all the stakeholders of a performance testing engagement on the objectives and never never consider performance testing as a part of functional testing and educating this will avoid wrong expectations from the performance testing exercise and from the performance testing team. Let's now move to the final and the fourth myth. Performance testing can only be done towards the end of the testing life cycle. Is that true? Are we required only during the end of the testing life cycle? Let's break the myth. So let's see the fact now. Performance testing should be conducted after the application is functionally stable, but that does not mean that the performance testing should happen at the end because performance bugs can be quite costly to fix when we find at the end of the release or towards the production deployment. Rather, it should be done incrementally with a baselining effort upfront and then incremental tests that are compared with the baseline to see if the performance is improving or deteriorating. Basically, having a baseline result will help us to compare the test results and that helps us to identify whether the application's performance have been improved or deteriorated. I feel I have covered some of the major myths in this video and thanks everyone for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and kindly comment your invaluable feedback or any of your responses in the comments section. Thank you once again. In our next blog, we will see the various challenges associated with the performance testing.